What's going on guys? I'm Bolt Matrix and today we are taking a look at the Shrine Warriors from SirToys.com. These are really, really weird and I just had to get a hold of them because they are so bonkers. So what we have here are Shrine Warriors that are, well, they're shape transformers. A little strange, I know, but I, I just fell in love with them when I saw the pictures and I had to pick them up because they are just so weird. So we have, first up, we have Dragon the Cube. We have, um, Wolf, or maybe Sphinx? Yeah, we'll go with Sphinx, the Pyramid. Unicorn, the Can of Coke. Elephant, the, um, Sectagon. And Griffin, the Sphere. All of these have a robot form, and then these five can combine into something completely ridiculous that actually doesn't work at all. So, we'll go ahead and take a look at all of that here. I hope you'll join me. We're going to start off by taking a look at Cube Dragon. Now, all of these guys actually have sounds. And they're all activated by a button. Some buttons are black, some are white. However, I cannot find the button on the outside of Cube Dragon. So, for example, here's Unicorn Can. The button is back here by the battery pack. And trust me, some of them work, some of them just don't. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't appear to have a button. I mean, the speaker is right where my thumb is, but no button. Anyway. So, transformation is kind of weird. To start off with, we're going to first come over to the sides and open up, just start opening panels. So, just start opening panels on the bottom and on the sides and unpegging things here and there. It's really hard to describe how some of these transform because they're just so very strange. But first off, we just kind of open up the cube and then at the bottom of the cube, we could fold out these. Oh, there's the button. Oh, did I mention that once you hit the button, you can't shut it off until you hit the button again? And I'm going to have to take the batteries out of this guy, these guys because once you pull that little pin, like a grenade pin that's just right there, it's a little piece of plastic that prevents the batteries from making contact. Once you pull that out, you can't really get it back in. Believe me, I've tried. So the transformation for, uh, for um, well, we'll call him Dragon, Dragon Cube, I guess, is... Just, it's kind of unpleasant, as if you're if if you're following, you really have to be careful and just pull different pieces apart, and eventually you'll end up with this robot mode that, if I'm honest, kind of looks like Ironhide. It really is strange. If Ironhide was yellow and had flamethrowers for hands, in fact, it kind of reminds me of Commando Man from Mega Man 10 or was it nine? Very very strange bot mode. And continuing with the Mega Man aesthetic, he definitely looks like a Mega Man villain, kind of like a version of uh, Commando Man and Guts Man here. That head sculpt just, it looks menacing, but I'm not sure how much of it it really is. When you push the button, his eyes sort of line up, light up, and so do his shoulders. Just weird. I guess his cannons are supposed to light up, but they don't. And yeah, uh, like I said, I don't speak Chinese, so I have no idea what he's saying! Overall, his bot mode is actually pretty neat, and is probably one of the more, I would say, uh, stocky of the group. I like it. I really do. I think it's a good bot mode, and it's definitely interesting and unique. Forget posability, though. He's way too top-heavy for any real posability. His left arm, this arm, actually can pose and stand in place. Forget it about the right arm. The screw is just way too loose, and I've tried tightening it, but it doesn't really work. So now that we've taken a look at the cube, let's go ahead and take a look at the triangle. Or, I'm sorry, pyramid. The pyramid does appear to be the smallest of the group, and the pyramid does appear to be a little bit oddly shaped, especially if you look at it from certain angles. It does activate GIMP sounds. Oh, 
Again, I have no idea what it's saying, but it's laughing maniacally. Pyramid's transformation is actually pretty interesting. To start off with, we're going to grab the front here and unpeg the fronts of the bottom of the pyramid and then fold them straight down. That will allow us to get in, <laughs> into the pyramid and fold the pyramid up and around. From this point, if you've got this figure, then it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. Fold out the arms, flip out the legs, and actually the legs will flip out and then the crotch will slide up into the rest of the pyramid. Push out the head and turn it around. Put it back into place. And then flip out these, I guess, missile launchers. They kind of sit here on the shoulders. And then flip the legs down. And if you think this figure is going to be a spindly, me or spindly mess, you're pretty much spot on. I also think that the arms have been misassembled because, or I guess not misassembled, but just not made correctly. Because it looks like the elbows are going are supposed to bend a certain way, but they don't. Oh, and um, this guy's ridiculously top-heavy and loose and floppy, and um, out of all of them, he is by far the worst. Here's the head sculpt. It's actually not too bad. I like the head sculpt. It's definitely got some paint, good paint apps. Better than some Hasbro stuff, but it's kind of lost when you flip the shoulder cannons up because you've got constant shadows on it. Now, the pyramid and the rest of the figures, save for Dragon Cube, all come with weapons. This guy specifically gets this uh, launcher, and it comes with a missile. And I was thinking, oh, well, this is going to be uh, kind of, well, it's going to be okay. And then I shot the missile. That is some serious hang time. I mean, this thing shot up a good four and a half feet into the air. So, yeah. So when trying to get the thing into his hands, it's just this small little peg. And you do have to be careful that the missile- OH GOD MY EYE! Next up, we're going to take a look at Griffin Sphere. Now, unfortunately, this thing, well, the sound gimmick just plain old done work. It did. Gimmick is dead. So to transform this guy, I actually like to split him in half, and he does split in half for the combined mode. And I just like to, you know, rip him in half because I'm sadistic like that. To start off with the transformation, we take the top half, open up the wings, and flip out the arms, ugh, which are really, really tight. Kind of push in the chest and flip up the section and push up the head. Now, there's a little blue flap here right underneath the head that you're supposed to flip down. Good luck, because I have to use uh, a couple of the weapons in order to flip it out because it's so freaking tight. And again, I don't know if you saw it, there were electrodes going up to his head, which means that there's an LED in his head, but it just, it don't work at all. For the bottom, the legs, kind of get in here and just start flipping pieces around and sliding them down. That'll find be the torso. And then get the legs, and this is actually the hardest part, is getting this leg assembly to come down. You have to pull it for, push the whole thing forward, which it doesn't always want to do. Flip it down and then flip out the feet. And then we can fold these sections up to form a front skirt and then slide the connected ports together. And there we go. And I'm sorry if that seemed a little bit out of focus for the whole transformation. Still working on the camera. And he comes or gets either this sword or this sword. The reason I'm a little bit iffy on that is because the directions have, well, the directions show him using both of them. I prefer to go with this one because, well, you'll see why in a little bit, but I like that look to him. I think this robot mode actually looks really good, kind of like a Roman centurion. I don't know about the sword, but overall it's pretty stable and it looks pretty good. I wish the lights and sounds worked though. Next up is Elephant Jewelry Case. Okay, I kid, but it really does look like one of those jewelry cases from like As Seen on TV. Now when you push the button on this guy,
Again, I don't speak Chinese, so I have no idea what it's saying, but I do appreciate the maniacal laughing. That's two of these figures that laugh maniacally. So, it, I guess they're supposed to be light and sounds. There are lights, but they don't work so well. Let me turn off my... Uh... Okay, that works a lot better. So, if that one does that, let's, uh, let's take a look at the other guys real quick. Uh. Oh, wow. That's just in time for Halloween. So let's look at a uh, dragon cannon. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that works a lot better in dark. I would just prefer if they made the uh, sounds and not actually spoke. All right, for this guy's transformation, we're gonna start off by kind of coming to the top here and unpegging the top like that and then coming to the bottom and flipping out the bottom. And we don't flip it all the way until we can move this panel here. And this bottom part will form the legs, so we have to pull them down and stretch out his legs. And then his feet, well, his feet are a little weird. They are on this double hinge, but they don't work all that well. So you really just have to be careful when standing him up. And then we can bring the top up here, fold it down, and it it acts like it's supposed to snap into place, but it just doesn't. So then we come in here into the front of the figure and fold out his arms and flip out his fists. And then we could flip around his shoulder cannons. Yes, he has shoulder cannons. Flip down the elephant head and flip up the head. And this is where we got to flip. Sorry, forgot to uh, slide forward the hips. So there we have his robot mode. And if I'm honest, I like the robot mode, but it has a few problems. One, you can't pose the arms at all. They don't move up or down. And two, nothing really locks into place. Let's see what hitting the button here for this guy does. Okay, that's pretty cool. The LEDs that are piped in here to the front. He also come, or you can also give him these cannons, which he can hold in robot mode. Though, he can't really do much with them. Um, but this guy next to the pyramid is the weakest. He would be really, really cool if things actually pegged into place and his feet weren't kind of, weren't a total mess. Uh, the directions don't really tell you how to really pose the feet, but I have found putting his feet like this, where that's the way they are before he's transformed, and then flipping them forward like that, that seems to work the best, but you still have a lot of, of well, let's just put it this way, he's going to fall over if you pose him wrong. But still, that looks pretty cool. Last up is the unicorn canister. Unfortunately, there's nothing to flash here in the in the canister mode. So we'll go ahead and get into the transformation. To start with, we'll reach on the bottom of the thing and flip out the what, section that will be the legs. And then we'll come over here to that so, to the sides and flip up these sections like this. And then flip down his front skirt and his uh, well, this backpack section that'll form or show his uh, head, expose his head, flip down the legs, turn them, and then push them up into the body to pop up the head. Pull out the legs that are very, very tight and flip out the feet. Like so. And then push them back up into the body. Flip out the right arm, and then come over to the left and flip the top of the canister down and unpeg the left arm. This section becomes a big shield. And then this is where the red sword comes into play. So he definitely looks like a centurion or a Roman gladiator of some sort. If we push the button, we get nothing. Oh, that actually worked. Because when I had him in canister mode, I couldn't get any noise out of him. 
All right, I'm sorry to all you epileptics out there. I admit I am rather smitten with this set. They're not perfect. They are a bit, a little bit fiddly, and I don't particularly like the sounds coming out of them, though I do appreciate the light gimmicks. The plastic on these guys is actually quite good. That is very surprising to me, considering these are coming from China, and I thought that they were going to be really kind of cruddy. But they're a good size, and they feel good. The only real complaints I have are they're just a little bit loose in some spots, and their combined mode, which I was originally going to show you, but I have spent the last half an hour trying to get them into their combined shrine mode, and it's just a nightmare. They don't stay together. They just fall apart. Instead, I'm going to show you a picture. For a quick size comparison, here is Scorn Deluxe Class. Voyager Class Evasion Prime, and Masterpiece 10 Optimus Prime. So these bots all fall into the range of Voyager slash smaller Masterpiece figures. What I love about these guys is they are so different and unique. I have never seen anything like this before, here in the U.S. or from anything from Japan. I just love them. I absolutely love them. They're of decent quality. They're, they're fun. They're relatively inexpensive. And like I said, they're just different. Guys, this has been Bolt Matrix taking a look at the Shrine Warriors from Sir Toys. As usual, I'm going to ask you to like, comment, and or subscribe. And like always, I'll catch you next time.